release it, you just put it back through that window you made, pull the tension 180 degrees, and it's out. We're tying down a filing cabinet, and we're going to use quarter inch Paramax to make it happen. Paramax is a nylon cord, and I'm going to start it off with an artillery loop, which is just a loop. And then I'll take this end here, and I'll push it through a window that I create by putting the free end over through that window there. I like this loop because it's easy to tie, and it's easy to untie. And I'm just going to put it on my first anchor point here. For a typical trucker's hitch, I'd put a couple bends into the rope, right? And then I would take this end here, throw it over, grab this one through, and then I'd pull everything together, right? And then here is my loop right here. Here's my standing end that I can pull, and then I get my two to one advantage, right? But whenever I let go, I lose all my advantage. This is how you keep it all. So we all have the same frame of reference. There's the top of the cabinet. Right there is my secondary anchor point, and then down on the ground is the rest of the cord that I'm working with. All right, so on my left hand, I'm gonna form a bite. And then on my right hand, I'm gonna put in a complete coil. Now I know coil is not proper rope terminology, but stay with me here. I'm gonna pull my coil off, rotate it 180 degrees, and then put the bite right back through. And then all I have to do is take this bite and anchor it along my standing end. Now, I like to do just a common lark's head or lark's foot. I'll make a bite, put my fingers through, go around and pinch, and then fold those ears together. Then I'll take my bite and I'll put it through and I'll tighten it up. I'm doing this now down here because the camera angle may not show what I'm doing. But that's what I'm using to anchor my upper loop right there. All right, let's get to business. Form a bite. One complete coil, pop it off, rotate it 180 degrees, pop it back on. And now I just need to anchor this loop here, or this bite, along my sanding end. Now here's where the magic happens. When I pull on this rope, every piece of tension that I put in, I get to keep. So pull, remains tight, pull, remains tight, pull, Still tight. Now I'm gonna put in some major tension into this thing. Check this out. I'm using an extension, a half inch extension. Watch all the tension that I'm about to pull on this. Okay. This is tight. Now how do I release it? All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the end that I was pulling on and I'm gonna put it through this little window here and pull it 180 degrees opposite of the way I was pulling it, okay? So I just pull it, that's it. Everything's loose. Now, you don't want to just rely on this black wall hitch. That's what you're forming here is a black wall hitch. Once you pull in your tension, you're gonna take another bite and put in a couple half hitches. Now this setup here has never failed me. I think you'll appreciate it too. Now seeing this may help you understand why this works. I have my other ink point over here. Now here's another way I can do it. I could take this free end here and I could flip it over and then I have an X. You can see an X right there where my thumb's at. I can take that X and I can put it over the top, and then I fold over this loop right over that bite, right? And now when I pull on this, you can see that when I pull, it slips under that locking portion, and every piece of tension that I put in, I get to keep. Let's see if you can zoom in on that and you can see what's happening. Now, when I want to let it go, I just pull it the other way and it spills the knot. So this portion pops upwards and now it's just a simple coil that will loosen up. 
So here's the basic of how this works. I'm going to take a bite, form it into my rope, and then I'm going to take my standing end and I'm going to make a complete coil around it. Now, I know coil is not proper terminology, but stay with me here. I'm going to pop this coil off, turn it 180 degrees, and then put it back on. Okay. Now I just need to anchor this loop to my standing end right here. Now I like to use a large foot. I'm just going to form another bite, fold it around itself. There we go. And I'm going to put this loop through it. Okay. Now here's where the magic happens. Now when I pull on my standing end, every bit of tension that I pull in stays in there. This knot works best in static rope, where you're not going to have a whole lot of movement as you tighten your rope. And this will really affect how you understand and use knots. Here is the tiebreaker. I have the loops tied to each other. Bowline versus our reverse engineered loop. The bowline is an ancient knot. Now, the first one ever found tied is pretty interesting. If you know those circumstances, please put it in the comments. But this is what a typical bowline looks like, and it is very strong. The bowline consists of two parts. The first is the turn, and the second is the bite. After pulling in our turn, we'll take the end of our rope, go up, around, and back through to form the bite. When I pull on our line, there is force being applied from three different directions. The right side of the loop in green, left side in red, and then the standing portion going up. Maybe that's the secret, that I have three directions of pull going into the same knot. But if that were the case, I should be able to pull on either two sides and the knot should come apart. Okay, we're tightened up, let's try the inner loop. Nope, stays together. Let's try these two. Stays together, these two. Stays together. And as this is pulling down, it's shutting our loop even tighter. But then as I pull tension on the opposite side of our loop and the standing portion, it also clamps down on that turn. There's a couple key things to learn here, and this will really affect how you understand and use knots. So what we're about to do is deconstruct this bowline and use the principles that we just learned about to create a new knot. So maybe the secret to the bowline is this turn that constricts as we pull in tension. If that were the case, I should be able to take my free end, pass it through the loop I turned in, and just apply and it should hold. Nope. But if this turn had some support to it, keeping it from spilling, maybe it would hold. And that does seem true. As I pull on my right side, it stays nice and tight until I let go, of course. So let's try this. We'll pull in the turn, we'll go through, and then instead of just letting go, I'm gonna put in a half hitch. That should give me the support I need to keep this knot. Let's see what happens. Pull, 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 oh. oh, something happened. If I take this knot apart, we can see that up here on top we have an overhand knot. Down below, we have another version of an overhand knot. But together, they're facing the opposite direction, and this is actually a granny knot. And so granny knots are notorious for being unstable and unsafe. And with enough tension, this will actually turn into a slip knot. Here's one of the best things about the bowline. As this thing tightens down, the travel in the rope is minimal. And that's going to be important here in a second. So we know that a turn creates an effective knot, but if I put my free end through, unless it's supported, it's just going to spill. Let's get this built up here. I'm going to put in my turn, and instead of a single strand, I'm going to double it up. Let's see how that works. Nope. So when I do this, I can see that my turn wants to spill clockwise, okay? So what if when I pull in my turn, I rotate it counterclockwise, so it needs to rotate the opposite way to spill out? So here we go. Let's start pulling on this. Looks like we're making some progress here. Nope. So now what we need to do is see if we can add more turns to support this line against the knot itself and not the bite we just pulled in. 
once, twice, counterclockwise rotation, form a bite, and pass it through. Right here you can see that the tension is being placed on this portion and not so much on our bite. Okay, pull, 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 pull. Looks pretty good. It looks like it might do well, but if I push on this enough, I think it would slip out. Let's add more security. I'll go around once, twice, three times, and then I'm going to rotate this counterclockwise so that the strand on the left is curled underneath. There we go. Now I'll take a bite. I'll pass it through and get this thing dressed up. Let's see what we have here. We have our constrictor, just like the bowline has, and we have the support. Now these turns are support. If you look at this line, this is where the knot would normally slip through. But when I pull it, the tension lands on the backside and it is stable. And the cool thing about this knot is there's nothing to jam onto. We can simply unwrap everything that we did. Maybe since we're using some of the same principles, we can go up against the bowline and see who snaps first. Now, if this knot really works, it shouldn't matter what type of rope we tie it in. And we failed at the loop. Our loop looks like we failed right at the entrance. Looks like the bowline held. And so did our loop. Bowline held and our test loop held. We snapped right at the rope. And we failed at the loop. If you're not familiar with 750 cord, you can see it has more strands than regular 550 cord. Looks like we failed at the loop here. This time the bowline failed and our loop survived. And here you can see since nothing is jamming on itself, we can simply unwrap the loop. We failed right at the entrance to the loop. held up and our loop held up it's like we've broken the middle here is the tie breaker I have the loops tied to each other bowline versus our reverse engineered loop let's see what happens see what we have here. Looks like, <laughs> looks like it's a tie. Both our loop and our bowline held. And we snapped right there. My theory is this works best in static rope. Rope that isn't going to slide a whole lot as we pull this tight because we do need to remove all the slack that goes through these turns. And as you can see, to do that, we need to pull on this bottom portion of the rope. When that happens, these tighten up. This removes the slack going this way. And unfortunately, as the slack rotates through and around the line, it creates a pinch point 
and that's where knots like to fail. So let me show you, I'll add some slack to this. When it's all tight, it works out perfect. But as I pull this, pay attention to this side right here. Pulling, 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 pulling. Just that little bit of the rope going across our tension line, that almost acts like a sawtooth going across the rope. Yes. Can you help me? Give me one second.
Here's the challenge in making this tripwire system work. On the right side of the doorway, we need a knot that will trip the counterweight into motion. That's the water bottle. On the left side, the knot needs to release under a certain amount of tension, but not before the tripwire. I'm using quarter inch Paramax to demonstrate this tripwire knot. And to give you a little better understanding of what's going on here, I'm gonna show you a different knot first. If I were to take a full coil of my rope and then push the loops out, I end up with this pretzel here. Now I can take my free end and weave it through the back and then through the front and then back out again. And watch what happens when I pull on these opposite sides. I end up with a four strand knot. This is the same knot to start a friendship bracelet the same ones you made in middle school. Now let me show you the real knot here. If I go around three times, then push two of those loops to the left and one to the right, I still get that pretzel formation, but I end up with two loops on the left-hand side. And so now I'm gonna take my free end, I'll go from the back, through the front, and back out again. And watch what happens when I pull the opposite sides. I still end up with that four strand knot. The only difference is I have two loops in one of the corners. Now let me tighten this up so you can see why that's important. Once we pull in our trip wire, we want this extra loop to add it as a support. Let me pull it in, there we go. And so what happens here is Here's my anchor on my thumb. I can pull on the opposite side with a lot of tension and it's not going to release until this end, the tripwire end, pulls it free. Let me show you a little better view. So here's our knot and the loop that we made with it. This long side, that's our counterweight side. And so we go around our anchor point, we'll go on top of our knot and place it behind that double loop there. Now we can pull in our tension and this other rope, this is our trip wire. Watch what happens, it's gonna peel away the loop that we just placed. Here it is from a different angle. I'll go around my anchor point, hook over the top of the knot, pull in my tension, and then here's our trip wire. As our trip wire is pulled, it slides the loop off the knot and releases. Now that takes care of our trip wire, but what if you don't actually want to trip somebody? You want the line to fall down after they've walked through it. Now every rope has a certain degree of pliability, and what I mean by that is how far we can squeeze the rope when it's pulled into a bite. Here you can see it's about a quarter inch. Now we can take advantage of that and use it to release our rope after a certain amount of tension has been applied to it. So here I'm going to make a single bite I'm going to wrap my free end around twice, and then I'll bring it up through here, and this bite right there, I'm gonna pull it through this little window. I will show you again. We'll pull it all tight. When I pull tension onto our knot, you can see this loop starts to collapse, and we get to the point where it has no more pliability, and it starts to fight against the knot. Well, I'm gonna rely on that certain amount of tension I need in order to break this knot. And that's gonna give us enough to pop free while still triggering the tripwire. Here it is again, collapsing that loop, collapsing that loop. Now it's starting to fight and pull. Now, if you're using something like paracord, paracord is very pliable. See, I can smash it all the way down. And so what I'd wanna do with that is wrap it around. Instead of just a bite, I would actually make it a coil. And so this would give a little more fight. And so here I go, I'm gonna wrap it around once, wrap it around twice. I'll pull it back through and into that window. There we go. Now when I wanna pull tension on this knot, you can see that my coil here is gonna fight and I need a certain amount of tension to break it free. Here's our tripwire knot and paracord. We'll go around our anchor point hook on. This is where our counterweight would be. And over here 
is our tripwire. And at the end of this would be the knot that we use taking advantage of the pliability of the rope. And this does work to scale. I've tried it in quarter inch all the way down to this fishing line. This pen activates the switch in our tripwire alarm. It's tied off to our counterweight, and when that falls, it rolls our pen upward, turning on the light switch. If we follow our fishing line, it goes across these key hooks, down to our strike plate screw, and there we have our tripwire knot. The actual tripwire goes across the doorway and is tied into the pin on the hinge there. This knot is a pliable release knot. And what that means is it has a feature to break away once the intruder walks through the line. And go. It didn't work! It didn't work! One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, go across the front. I'm gonna go around the back. And what better place to stow this than under this bite that we just pulled over the top. So there we go. Pull. And this thing is super strong. It's not gonna slip. This video is from Mega, who asked about a knot for hoisting wire. This is the wire we're using. It's about a quarter inch thick. Now this wire is pretty slippery. You can see that when I bend it, it has a, uh, a plastic coating. There it is. And that coating likes to be slippery. So the problem he's having is the wire he's using is too thick to bend. He's tried some other knots, but they haven't worked which means we'll have to put a whole lot of friction on this in order for it to work. Leave yourself some room at the end and start wrapping down your wire. One, two, three. I'm gonna do this eight times. There we go. Now I'm gonna take this end here and go over the top, come back down. And even from here, you can see if I apply tension, I'm already getting the friction that I need to make this work. But this end has to be held, otherwise it's just gonna fall apart. So what I'm gonna do is wrap it behind, and you see this loop that's going across the front? I'm simply gonna tuck this underneath that loop. So I'll lift it up, tuck it underneath, pull it back down here to the bottom, and now we have the friction we need to make this work. Oh dear. And when you're done, you simply slide it off your wire. We're hooked up to the tiebreaker. We have our wire and then our two knots. And let's see what we get. This side I just untied and we're still attached. We did break over at the bowline. Let's take a look what happened here. Over here, we held, everything looks good. Over here, oh, it looks like one of our ropes started to slip, but we're still in business. Let's try something else. Now we're gonna try it with some rope. We have a section tied in with the same knot on both sides. I had high hopes that this would work with the rope, but you're about to see that unless you have a rigid structure, it's gonna fold over and slip right out. Stop, stop. Yeah, it is coming undone. Here I tried climbing rope with the same result. Now we're gonna try it on a solid square bar. I thought the bar slipped out, but looking, it looks like it, uh, everything held. I really didn't expect that. And we broke right here. Now let's see if we can undo this. Oh yeah, look at that, other side. Yep, 
Yeah. That's pretty amazing. What do you think? So I don't know the name of this knot, but I do know a couple knot principles that help me figure it out. So one is this hitch here that you see arborists use. I'll wrap this around a bunch of times, and then I'll take my two strands and I'll pass them through. And now as I pull on this, every coil starts to tighten up and I do get the tension I need to prevent it from slipping. Okay, here's another thing I know. If I wrap this around once, it slips. If I wrap it around five times, it still slips, but less. Once I get to about 10 times, there's so much friction through each turn that I'm not able to pull it so easily. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, go across the front. I'm gonna go around the back. And what better place to stow this than under this bite that we just pulled over the top. So there we go, pull. And this thing is super strong. It's not gonna slip. Take my marlin spike and I'll pull in a marlin spike hitch. Now I have my handle and I can pull on this with as much tension as I want and I'll actually snap the rope before this hitch comes undone or slips. If you'd like to support my channel, you can pick up one of these Marlin spikes. I designed it myself. I carry them on my shop or Amazon. There's a link in the description. Thanks. If you're ever in a situation where you need a knot and you don't exactly know which knot to use, this may work out for you. It's very secure and even after you've put tension on it, it's not very difficult to untie. You only have to remember two big wraps and then two little wraps. And that gives you a secure knot. If your anchor point is closed off, same thing, two big wraps. Now you just have to include the other side of your line and then you'll do your two little wraps. Here it is again, go around our anchor point, two big wraps, include our line, two little wraps, and then pull everything tight. Let me give you a couple concepts to help you see why this works. If I wrap my hand one big wrap and then go one little wrap, I end up with an overhand knot. If I wrap two big wraps, go over the top with one little wrap, when I go to my anchor point, I end up with a ring hitch. And you may recognize this knot. This is a very stable knot. I use it all the time to tie things down on my roof rack. Now in all reality, I could get by with two big wraps and only one little wrap, but the issue is if I wrap this the wrong way and I go underneath instead of over the top, watch what happens when I put it on my anchor point. It just completely comes unraveled. And so that's why after my two big wraps, I do two little wraps because if I go the wrong way, it'll still work out as a knot. So the next time you're the center of attention and people are looking at you to tie a knot, just remember two big wraps, two little wraps, and you will be just fine. Here we have some 30 pound fishing line and I've already strung a line across. So in this scenario, we had a Christmas party and we were hanging paper snowflakes from another line that was going from wall to wall. So here I wrap my fingers around twice. I'll collect my line and now I'll pull it off my fingers. And since this is so small, I'm just gonna gather it all together and I'll just roll my fingers. All right, let's make sure we get that. There we go. And I'm just gonna pull it all tight. Okay, now this is gonna be pretty secure here. It's gonna take a lot of force to pull it off. In fact, let me get a Marlin spike. 
I'm going to wrap this up and then I'm going to show you how much force we need to pull it off. Now again, if this is just a paper snowflake, you're going to be fine. There we go. All right, here we're going to use a lever on my mini lathe. Now, you just saw it on the line itself. It does pretty well. But when you get to a round post like this, it doesn't work as well with fishing line. Let me show you. So there we go. We got our knot tied. Throw it over the top. Pull everything tight. It does have some good holding power. But we're not going to be able to snap the line in this configuration here. So let me wrap this up and you can see what I'm talking about. You see it slips out. In tying a typical bowline, you turn in a loop, then you take your bitter end, go up the hole, around the tree, and then back down again. In tying this knot, we'll start off the same way. We'll take our bitter end and run it through the hole. This time, we're gonna go through twice. And now we'll go around the tree and back through the hole. But when we do that, we wanna make sure our bitter end is longer than the two loops that we just pulled in. This knot definitely has a name. If you know it, please put it in the comments. But what we're about to do with these two loops, I've never seen it before, so I don't know what it's named, but to me, it looks like a Venus flytrap. We'll take the left side, the side with the bitter end, and we'll tuck it underneath the loop on the right, and then we'll take this end and we'll poke it through and create a buckle. Go around our anchor point. The loop on the left is gonna go underneath the loop on the right and then we'll pass our bitter end through that window we just created. Now when we pull on this, instead of slipping out, we have the support of our anchor point and it is extremely stable. And once the load is removed, you pull off your buckle and it comes right apart. Now let's take this to the tiebreaker and see if we can snap our rope without our buckle failing. Looks like one of our loops slipped, but in trying to pull this apart, this rope has fused itself together. And here's the other side. Let's see how we do with this. Not as bad. So it slipped on this side, and my thought is, since the rope is about the same diameter as the shackle, if I were to use a smaller diameter rope, we'd be able to snap it. Let's try it. All right, let's take a look over here. Looks like our buckle held, but we split off at the bowline. Check the other side. Same thing, our buckle held. And that's where we broke off. So if this theory is correct, I should be able to replicate it three more times. All right, looks like we slipped on this side, but we stayed on over here on the pole side. Looks like we are fused a little bit, so it looks like both of them are probably slipping. This time we slipped off the white pole, but the hook side performed well. We snapped the rope that time. Well, we broke off at the uh, bowline, but you can see our buckle is still in place here. Okay, over here we tightened up. So 
because something slipped and I can't even pull it off this hook. So here's what I think is happening. Even though we pulled all the slack we can out of this knot here, it still wants to tighten up and adjust. And when that happens, the length of our two loops, they change. And this knot is dependent on keeping both these loops equal. As you can see, these two loops are connected by this centerpiece here. And so when one loop slips, the other one changes as well. So instead of just a single wrap down below and above, we're going to double that up and hopefully that'll keep these loops from slipping. We'll give ourselves a little more length. I'll twist in my loop. And this time I'm gonna lay one more right on top of it. Now I'm gonna take my bitter end, run it through once. I'll run it through twice. I wanna make sure that our plating is nice and flat. And now instead of going around the tree just one time and going back through the hole, I'm gonna go around a full turn and then I'll place it through the hole. Again, we want that bitter end to be longer than our two loops. Dress everything up. Oops. There we go. This is what it should look like when you're all done and dressed. Two loops below, two loops above. Now let's tie it into our anchor point. Place our anchor in between. The loop with the bitter end goes underneath. And then we poke through that window that we just created. There we go. With these extra turns above and below, this should prevent our two loops from changing lengths and make this buckle a lot more stable. For this to be a successful test, I'd expect the rope to break right at the entrance to the knot. However, if we find the loop still intact, that means that our rope slipped and our buckle failed. Let's give these four different ropes a try and see what we get. Everything came apart, nothing was fused together. So where would you use something like this? One option is a stern of a strap with a quick release. I'm comfortable using it as an anchor point in my truck bed. You could also use it as an easy way to lower something down. Or you can use it as a means to quick access to your gear. So why does this work? Let's go around our object here. We'll push our loop on the left through the loop on the right. Got that window and we'll plug in our buckle. Right, a lot of science going on here. It reminds me of one of those tens of gritty statues, you know, where the force is pull and push to keep everything in place. That's what's happening here. As much weight and tension as we pull on our free end, that's as much as we're going to push down on this top loop, which presses down this bottom loop, and the bottom loop keeps the free end, the bitter end, in place. As long as we have a surface that will support this bitter end, this is not going to come undone. Which is why you want to be careful if you use this as a bracelet buckle. If this bitter end gets pushed up against the hard part of your wrist, it's going to take a lot more force to get it undone. To give you a better view of the knot I'm tying, I'm going to demonstrate in Paramax. First thing I'm going to do is tie a simple overhand knot at the very end of my rope. And I'll pull it tight so I don't have much excess at the end. Then I'll give myself enough length to form a loop, and I'll tie another overhand knot. From here I'll take the end and I'll place it right back through the overhand knot. Now this is tied so that if I kept on pulling, I would just create another knot, as opposed to going through the other end, and if I kept on pulling, the knot would slip out. Let's get back to where we were. There we go. And now, this is where the magic happens. I'll clamp down on my free end there, 
and it's time to form the 90 degree bend on my loop. And to do that, I'm gonna twist the plating so it binds up and folds over. So here we go, I'm gonna twist clockwise. Twisting, it starts to turn the other way. And there it is, okay? From here, I can convince it a little bit. There we go. Now all I need to do is take my standing in and twist in a half hitch. I'm gonna throw this right on top and I'm gonna capture the overhand knot at the very end. And that's just so it doesn't slip out once I start pulling on my rope. Just adjust everything up. There we go. Now I can take this and slip it through or under whatever I need to retrieve. For the toggle side, I'm gonna roll the rope towards me once, roll it towards me twice, and I've created a little window here. I wanna pull the standing end out and then pull it tight. Then I'm going to take this end here, thread it through the loop I just created, and then pull the standing end to collapse the loop right on top. This creates our trefoil knot. It's also known as a Ashley stopper or oyster man stopper knot. But if you're doing this from any distance, it may be difficult to line these up as you're bobbing the ropes around. So we need a guide, just like you'd see on a fishing pole. Now typically, when you tie a loop into a rope, you end up with something that is parallel with your rope. Now we don't want that because it's not gonna help guide our toggle along. We want this to be 90 degrees to our rope. What we'll do is form a bite and place it behind our rope now we have an upper and lower loop. The rope that is towards us, we're gonna place it through the lower loop. And with this loop, we're gonna throw it on top and over the upper loop. Now we'll pull everything tight. And what this does is give you a loop that is 90 degrees from the line. Okay, now that you know how this is tied, let's form it down below. All right, so let's form our bite. We'll go behind the upper loop. Down below, we'll thread through and then go on top and over. There we go, and pull everything tight. Now we'll thread our toggle line through and we are set up to do this from a farther distance. Now that you have an idea of how this is tied, let's go get our keys from the storm drain. While this system gives you more control, it does require a loop line and a toggle line. So you'll need double the amount of rope. But what if you don't have that luxury and you just need to use a single line? Imagine these are the ends of your drawstrings. You'll take your left hand side and form it so it looks like an ampersand. With your right hand side, you'll form a loop, thread it through the top, go around the bottom and pull everything tight. Now the good thing about tying it this way is it's not gonna loosen up on you. But let's say your shorts are too loose. You'll tighten them up by taking this thumb loop here and gathering up this loose end, and now you can pull in more tension. When the knot resets, it'll stay tight. If your shorts are too tight, same thing, take your thumb loop, gather up this loose end, and give yourself some slack. And then once you're all done, you'll simply take this end and pull everything free. Here's a first person point of view. Now this drawstring is sewn in at the back of the short, so I need to pull in some tension on the left side first. But I'll pinch it with my right hand and then I'll grab it from the left and pull in my ampersand. With my right hand, I'll pull in the loop, 
go through the bottom and then over the top and then I'll pull it tight. Now when I want to add tension I'll grab this loose end here and my thumb loop and pull in some tension. That's good. If I want to loosen up my shorts grab the thumb loop and the loose end and I'll pull in some slack and when I'm all done I'll just take this end and pull it free. I can make it long and it'll stay. I can make it short and it'll stay. There we go. And now if we want to release it, we can pull out our little string here. Watch, it's not as easy as you would think. Still tight, we gotta work it loose. There we go. We're using Diamond Raid Poly Rope. Roof work is going on, but rain is also coming, so there's another big hole underneath this tarp. So now we gotta find a system to tighten and anchor the tarp. On the side we're gonna tie our eyelet to, we're gonna tie in a Venus flytrap. Now this isn't uh, the real name of the knot, it's just something I call it. It's actually a Portuguese bowline or a French bowline. So we'll start with turning in a loop, just like that. We'll take our free end, we're gonna run it through once, and then run it through twice. There we go. And now we'll take the end and we'll go around the tree and back down the hole just like we would for a regular bowline. And then tighten everything up. There we go. Should have something that looks like that. Now we'll take our bottom loop, thread it through the back of the eyelet. Our top loop is gonna go through the first one we made. And then we'll take our free end and we'll poke it through, creating a little buckle system. Okay, there we go. Now, if you're worried this is gonna come free, what you can do is create another loop with your free end and then poke it through. Make sure everything's nice and tight. And then you'll poke this free end through the first loop that you made to secure it. There we go, all the way through. But really, I don't think we're going to need it. I guess the storm is going to prove me right or wrong. So I'm just going to leave it just like a regular buckle. Just like that. Now we got to measure our distance. We'll go all the way over here to this gutter anchor there. And we're going to take that same length going back towards our loop. There we go. Okay, our first section of rope goes from the eyelet all the way over to the anchor gutter right there. And I'm just going to grab the halfway point. And here I'm going to tie a loop. Here we'll tie a special loop. If you know its name, leave it in the comments. But we'll start by making a complete loop there. This on the left is going to go down. And then this loop on the right is going to go through. There we go. Let me know if you know the name. Next, we're gonna take our end of the rope and we are going to pass it through, creating a little sliding loop here. There we go, you can see how that looks. Now we're gonna take this part and this is what's gonna go around our gutter. Okay. okay, here's the whole system here, anchored in there. We've got our loop, we've gone around the anchor and now we're going to tie another Venus flytrap on this side. Okay, now this loop here I'm going to buckle into with the end of my rope. Might be a little difficult for you to see. Same way I did the tarp through the grommet. There we go. Perfect. I'm gonna pull my free end here and you can see I'm snaking through my tackle. There we go. And the beauty of this system is wherever I adjust this, it stays because we have equal tension going in all directions. Okay, I can make it long and it'll stay. I can make it short and it'll stay. Same thing on the other side. See, we're loose right now, but we can take this end and pull it tight. There we go. And now if we want to release it, we can pull out our little string here. Watch, it's not as easy as you would think. 
Still tight, we gotta work it loose, there we go. Let's see how we did. It's the next morning, rainy. Looks like we're good, let's check our ties. Yeah. So we fared well. So do this thing. There we go. 